Hello, hello guys. It's good to see you again. I'm going to check real quick and make sure I am actually going here. Okay, so question I get asked a lot is when you do art intervention, how do I figure out which materials to use? Because if you've ever been to the craft section of the store or like Hobby Lobby or Michaels, there are a million billion things that you can use, right? And it is a big and important question to figure out like what do I use to get the creative win that I'm looking for and for folks who will raise their hand and say hey I'm not creative I don't know anything about this stuff and therefore I can't do it it's hard to give yourself permission to um, just try some stuff so I am going to go through the great debate here for you. Um, drawing versus painting. And it is a great debate. Um, let me just check my sound. Okay, good. Good, good, good. We're going. Going uh, here. Oops. Let me fix my sound. Okay, good. Okay, tech is all aligned. <laughs> so drawing versus painting, the great debate, right? When you are working on something that you're developing, that you're creating, the materials you use matter, okay? So you guys might have seen me um, putting out these drawn memes uh, for the last couple weeks and I noticed something when I was doing those I noticed that I haven't been drawing very much and what happens for me when I draw is I get kind of tight I get kind of tight I get kind of perfectionistic I get really worried about how I'm going to get things to the end, how I'm going to get what I'm working on to the end point. So let's say, let's see, I'm going to give myself a prompt here. Let's say I want to look at being stuck. I'm stuck somewhere in my business. Something I'm working on just isn't moving. I want to draw a picture of being stuck. So I might come over here and be like, okay, I'm frustrated. This is me. Like, oh my God, I'm so frustrated, right? There's all this energy, I'm frustrated, and I can't see where I'm going. Now, if I want to keep going and explore the stuck point, the creative stuck point through drawing, what happens for me and what typically happens for my clients is this becomes an explanation. It becomes an explanation more than an exploration. And I like to explore. That's how I get the absolute best um, creative wins is through exploring. But if I'm drawing, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and explain to myself what's going on. So I would go from here, I'm frustrated, to I'm working on a proposal and getting nowhere. Awesome. That's awesome. Does it really tell me anything? Not really. It tells me I'm frustrated. It tells me I'm doing something that's not working. How is that going to help me get a win? Well, what I do for people more than anything is I put a paintbrush in their hands. 
because this kind of explanation is really hard to do with paint. And if I try, if I try and explain things with paint, if I try to draw with paint, doesn't work very well. So I might come up, if I'm, try, if I'm really trying to hold on to the control that drawing supposedly gives me, again, I'm going to come in and be like, let me explain this. Here's me. Here's me. And I'm frustrated. And I'm frustrated. And if I continue on, it could be like, because I'm working on this thing, I'm working on a proposal, and it's not going well. This doesn't feel right. There is something that I notice when I'm trying to draw with paint that I don't necessarily notice here because left brain loves to explain things. Left brain is super logical. So working very logically makes my left brain happy. Also, when I'm doing daily things, when I'm out adulting, not walking around with a paintbrush. You don't sign your credit card receipts with a paintbrush. You do it with a pen, right? So when I am trying to explore a creative block and I'm doing it with materials that I normally use, pen, markers, and I'm trying to draw it out, I am not likely to see what's standing in my way because what happens when, when we are used to doing things in a certain way, we are literally going over the same tracks, we're using the same operating systems in our brain that get us to the stuck point in the first place. When we're stuck, we have to get creative about how we're working the problem so that the problem doesn't persist and so that Getting there doesn't take forever in a day. I do not like to take forever in a day to find the answer to a creative problem. So what I do is I give people paint. Because what happens with paint is I can start off here. I can start off very left brain, very much trying to control how I'm looking at this problem. And I can recognize oh, I really need to step back from going all logical on myself, from throwing down a big logic bomb, okay? So I might come in and be like, okay, we're going to release this control and we're going to make this more fluid. This is water, okay? We're going to make this more fluid. We're going to see what happens with that. So I may come in here, and I'm going to move this water around, okay? And I'm going to be thinking about what I'm stuck on. And I'm going to get this real nice and fluid. I'm going to get my surface really wet. This is paper, just in case you're wondering. I'm gonna get my surface really wet. So I, I'm literally working the problem in a very fluid way. So we've got this pretty nice and wet. And I can come in and I can work the problem in a different way. I'm gonna lay ground. I'm going to move color around in a really fluid way. I'm 
because of the way I teach people to paint, to use paint as an art intervention, I'm going to start and I'm not even going to think about where I'm going to end up. Not going to think about it because I have no idea how I'm going to get from here to my solution. I'm not explaining anything here. I'm getting fluid and I'm using fluid materials. So let's say my creative problem, my biggest creative problem right now is that I don't feel inspired. I don't like the proposal I'm working on. It's super boring. I'm making a graph or a chart or a list or whatever. And I'm not really feeling very inspired. And what happens when I get really fluid is all of a sudden, like, I'm really super interested in where the heck I'm going with this. I don't know where I'm going. And at this point, I'm engaged enough to follow where the path leads. This is boring. This does not really excite me in terms of like, ooh, what am I gonna find? Because what I'm gonna find is whatever I draw on the board. There's, there's not a whole lot of fluidity here. And this lack of fluidity mirrors the problem that I'm having, <laughs> typically. So I want to do something more fluid. I want to do something that is going to be interesting to me. I want to do something that is going to spark so that all of me is engaged, so that lefty is in the mix, and so is right side of the brain. Because what happens when we hit that level of... Um, I lost my word. When we hit that level of engagement, we have so much more information available to us from up here. And we also have a lot more information available to us from our hearts, our emotional side, and also our body. Those things are incredibly important when we're working a creative problem, when we're working a development problem. Because if I notice that my body is going like this, I'm getting super tense, and I'm like making tiny little marks, that's how my figuring it out process <laughs> is working. You know, if I am developing something for my business and I'm feeling like this and I'm making tiny little marks, what's going to come out on the other side I'm not really going to like it. It's going to be boring and you guys aren't going to care about it either because I don't care about it. So I want to connect with what's inspiring. So going with, let's say I'm doing this. I'm like, oh my God, it feels so good just to move the paint. And I can feel my body opening. I can feel my heart opening. I can feel my brain going, oh my God, this is amazing. <laughs> Instead of explaining myself, what I'm going to do is like, hmm, maybe I will give myself the gift of going even further with this. Now I'll add some more water because water is awesome. This is paint, watered down paint. I want to do something that's just amazing. Let's do one of these. Oh my God. <laughs> How often do we get to get really, really fluid with something? Like this is awesome. Okay, like watching watching the paint come down, watching it mix with the water. I can add more. I can actually come in and really play with my stuckness, really play with what I'm working on and see what happens. And I can do things like this too. 
let's shift perspective. Let's let this flow in a totally different way. Let's see where this goes. Let's see, because now I'm curious. Now I'm curious what's gonna happen with the next thing I do with this. I'm fully engaged, I'm curious. You know what happens when we get curious? We get really creative. Let's see what happens when we add some green to the mix. And again, I'm gonna wanna watch it flow. I am engaged. My whole brain is engaged. I am interested in what I'm doing. And I might wanna shift my perspective again and help this flow the other way. and just see what happens. I'm gonna turn it back this way, just, just for, just cause, we'll just say just cause. <laughs> so now I'm like, I am looking at something, I'm working with something that has got my absolute full attention. Absolute. Now, if I come back over here, to my like super controlled explaining sort of thing. <laughs> I want to get fluid with this about the only thing I can do, at least on a whiteboard. So we're just gonna erase. Blah, right? Didn't like it. So if I'm trying to loosen up while drawing, let's say you don't, you don't have paint, you're at the office or somewhere else. If I want to loosen up with drawing, I want to not do this. This is what I did before. This is not exciting, I don't care. So I don't want to do that. What I do want to do is I want to get bigger. Because what I can do here, I can make big strokes. I can make big marks. I have big interaction here. I have fluid interaction. So how can I give myself that when I'm drawing? We make those same big movements. So I may come over here <laughs> and try and cover my paper. I'm going to lay ground. I'm going to confront the white space with what's at the base of what I'm working with. What happens when we make these big fluid movements, whether we're going side to side, up or down, around in a circle, what happens when we're making big movements is we engage our brain in a totally different way than if we're like doing one of these, you know, super precise. When we get big, when we cross the midline of our body, we increase the fluidity of communication going on inside. And when that is flowing more freely, when it's not stuck and bound up in the same old patterns, we are so much more likely to get to a creative win because we are literally, literally opening up to what is possible. I kind of like where this is going. It's super wet right now. So if I wanted to work real quick on paper that's wet, I can take my brush and use the non-brush end and come in here and make lines. I can carve through the paint. Let's see, give me a little bit 
so I can carve through the paint. I can also, I'm like almost going to like wipe this on myself because I totally do that. <laughs> if you've ever been in session with me, I totally wipe paint on myself. Um, so we have the option then here of working wet or dry and it makes a big difference and to give ourselves the opportunity to work within a really wide spectrum again gets us to the creative win faster we're more engaged during the whole process and we just like what we do so much better now, if, if you're going to come over here, if you're drawing, you can still work a very fluid process, but you're going to be competing with the control that is inherent in the media that you're using. So marker is art media, paint, art media. You are going to come right up against the control that comes with this, and you're going to have to work the process in a different way. So. I would need to give myself permission if I was working like this on a piece of paper I would need to give myself permission to just go ahead <laughs> and draw over top of what's there rather than coming in and erasing I would want to give myself permission to not be perfect and withdrawing people often want perfection and again it's not a failing on anybody's part to want that I want perfection <laughs> when I draw it's not a failing it is it's something that is really caused by the quality of the materials that you're using so if I'm not looking for perfection here I can do I can do some pretty fluid things when I'm drawing okay so if you if you're sitting down and you're like okay I really need to work through this block look at the materials you're using and check in with yourself and see like when I'm doing this how is this hitting for me? Is my body like going like this or is my body going like, woohoo, this is awesome, let's keep going. Check in, okay? Um, I'm going to have to think of what challenge I'm going to post because I did not think about that yet. And I will post it in the status um, if I get there <laughs> okay um, as always let me know what you're working on let me know if you have any questions about anything um, if you're looking to try uh, new art interventions new art materials and you're just wondering how the heck to get started or what other people are doing definitely hit me up um, I love to have those conversations and when we talk to other people about our creative process, again, we're widening the things that we have available to us to get to that win that we're really looking for. So let me know, and I hope that you guys have an awesome day. I will catch you later. Bye-bye.